Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan as well as the author of fi Netflix Financial Report 2021. And what I'd like to do today is to give you all a behind the scenes look at the financial model that I use as the foundation for writing up my Netflix financial report for 2021. So please keep in mind the financial model that I'm going to give you all a sneak peek at. It is not for sale. It is proprietary, but it is where I put all the information in from, from Netflix for the last five years and calculate the ratios and I'm able to identify the trends. So let me go ahead and you know introduce you all to the financial model that I used. And so first and foremost, here's the model. And what I always do when I start to write up the Netflix financial report is I'll start with the information page. And on the information page here, I, I kind of take a look at the executive team. I want to see what their pay is um, to see, you know, if they're getting paid too much or not enough or, you know, what's the pay strategy for the executive team. So for this right here, we got Will Mont, I believe it is, Hastings, the founder. He's making a little under a million dollars. That, that's pretty darn low for a founder. But again, we, I also don't know what his title is except for founder. You know, what does he do? Does he sweep the halls? Does, is he CEO? Uh, I, I got my information from Yahoo Finance, so they really didn't go in-depth with it. And what I did also find is that this Theodore gentleman, the CCO, he's making $21 million. That is a substantial amount of money for a multi multinational executive, you know, and he, he seems, I believe he's the uh, chief creative operator. And I get they're competing with Disney and they're competing with Amazon. So they're going against the big boys and they need to hire, you know, the, the top, the creme la creme for their executive team. So maybe that's what they're doing. And if the returns substantiate the, you know, the amount of money they're paying the executive team, so be it. <clears throat> Um, now, what, what I am a little bit concerned with is these next two, the, the CPO and the CFO. For most multinational organizations that I've researched, their pay is usually between one to three, to maybe four million dollars. These gentlemen right here, they're pulling down six to twelve million dollars a year. That is a substantial amount of money for an executive team. So from my most my humble of opinions, this seems to be, they're, they're paying them a, a little more than what they're worth based on the research that I've done. So that is from an investor's perspective, that's a concern. The next thing that I would look at when I'm doing my financial report is going to be the 52 week stock prices. So for, um, for Netflix for the last year, the company's stock price has grown by 10%. However, the biggest note to identify here is the company has a bunch of peaks and valleys I and mean, they're hitting almost 560 right here back in um, you know the end of August beginning of September and then you know, within 30 days they're down to um, 460 in another 30 days they're up 580 I mean if, if you're a trend investor um, th this this stock might be something you want to take a look at I'm not saying that I would or wouldn't I'm just saying this this stock's got a lot of volatility and as a growth as a growth investor i'm not sure i'd be really too interested in in the vol volatility here as a trend investor it, it would definitely be something that i'd want to take a look at and maybe you know see where the peaks and values are and if it's something that could be exploited <coughs> the next thing that i would take a look at or that i do take a look at and write up in my financial report for netflix is their dividend payout policy Netflix has not paid out any dividends in the last five years. So what that tells me is a, the company is in either a growth phase of their business model, which means that they're expanding, they're growing and they're reinvesting their profits, or they don't have any profits to, to pay out for dividends. And, you know, so that would be a major concern for an investor. So th those, you know, two, two of the reasons that could, they could not have a dividend payout policy and if, in my experience, it's it's the it's the first one. The company is in their growth growth phase of their expand um, business cycle, thus why they're not paying out dividends. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do in my financial report is take a look at the income statement and go through about four or five different light items and identify some trends in there. So, for example, if we take a look at the revenues right here, we've got revenues of about 8.8 .8 million dollars in 2016. And from that point, they jump up to 11.6 million, 15.7 million, 20.1 million, and then finally 24.9 billion dollars in 2020. Average growth rate per year is 29.8%. 
for a multinational organization, a 30% growth rate um, year over year for five years is a phenomenal trend. So that's definitely a benefit for the organization. However, as an investor, we, we also want to know that they're not going to be able to keep up a 30% or a 20% growth rate for five or 10 or 15 more years, maybe another three or four years. But when you get in 10 to 15 years for long-term investment, that's probably not going to happen. Um, especially when Disney Plus is coming out and, and their subscriber base is growing substantially. Uh, it, people can only watch one, you know, streaming source at a time. And, you know, when, when she, the more com competition comes out, the more um, stress it's going to put on the revenue. So I, I'd be, I'd be a little bit hesitant to, to think that they're going to be able to hold this growth rate for the long term. Next thing that I'd take a look at would be the balance sheet. And again, I do summarize the information in the um, Netflix financial report. And an example of what I would analyze would be the cash. So the cash position for the organization in 2016 was $1.4 billion. 17 went to 2.8 billion, 19, 3.7. And, um, 18 3.7 billion 19 5 billion and then 2020 we we had a cash position of 8.2 billion dollars now the company is growing their cash pile substantially I, i've got to wonder why they're doing that why are not reinvest nor spending that money in growth in, in new um new movies and you know higher or just you know expanding services to you know maybe the it's expand services for maybe technology instead of just you know putting all their eggs in one basket for the streaming service you know they're, they're not it doesn't seem like they're utilizing their cash position as well as they should worst case scenario you know put some of the money into the short-term investments they did that in 2016 when they had a cash position of 1.4 billion dollars when they're up to 8.2 billion dollars they're still not using the short-term investment opportunities that they have available to them so this might tell me that the cash you know the executive team they're being a little bit lax with their their current ratio their current um current asset management and that, that shows you know a little bit of an oversight and as an investor, you know, you, when you, personally, I want to see a tight ship run. I want to see the cash position, if it's not being utilized, if it's not needed in operations, kick it into short-term investments, or even better, you know, reinvest it into operations, expand your services. So that would be a little bit of a concern right there that tells me the management team or the executive team is really not on top of how they're using their cash. The next thing that I have here is going to be the current ratios or the i'm sorry rather the calculated ratios of liquidity the asset utilization profitability ratios long-term debt and so for this right here i would go ahead and i'd analyze about you know, nine or ten different financial ratios for example the current ratio and the current ratio calculation is simply current assets divided by current liabilities if we have a, a, a sum or an answer or a ratio of 1.0 and above that means the current assets are greater than the current liabilities. As a result, usually the company is going to be financially solvent. In this particular situation, for 2016, the current ratio is 1.0, which is excellent. Uh, the company has enough current assets to cover their current liabilities. In 2017, they held it steady with the 1.0 uh, current ratio. 2018, it starts to get a little bit away from them. They start approaching the 1.5 marker. And when they start getting to the 1.5 marker, the 2.0 marker for the current ratio, that kind of tells me that the company is being a little bit lack with their management of the current um, current assets. And they, they need to pay a little bit more attention to it to optimize the opportunities at present. So 2018, it got a little bit away from them. 2019, they, now the pendulum's shifting a little too far the other way. Now they're starting to drop below the 1.0. Their current liabilities are exceeding their current assets, which is not a problem because Netflix does have a continuous cash flow on a monthly basis from their subscribers. It's just there's no consistency. You, they're, they're consistent in 16. They're consistent in 17. 18, it's getting away from them. 19, they're going too far the other way. And then 20, they're going back the other way. They're going a little bit higher. You know, again, it's, it's a little too higher. You got too, a little too much current um, current assets as com compared to your liabilities. You know, kick some of that money into the short-term investment accounts. Uh, kick some of that money into operations. Invest in some more movies. You know, put that money to work. And or if you're not going to put that money to work, then heck, kick that money back to the investors through dividends. Do something with it. Don't just sit on it in a checking account not making any interest. All right, so hopefully... 
this little insight into the financial report or how I derive the information that I use in the financial report is helpful. Just again, please keep in mind, this model is not for sale. It's just what I use to write up the financial report for Netflix. If you are interested in purchasing this financial report, just mosey on over to my website, qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash Netflix financial statements and financial ratios. And on that site, I do give y'all some more insights into the um, income statement, the balance sheet, and also the financial ratios, as well as I give you the opportunity to purchase the full financial report for Netflix. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And as always, have a fantastic day. Thank you.